So, Gift of India is a poem by Sarojini Naidu. This poem was written when Britishers used to rule India, when India was not, still not free. So, it's a prayer, it's a kind of wish of Mother India. So, the speaker of this poem is Mother India. So, she's saying, is there aught, anything you needed that my hand withheld? So she is saying or asking a question to people of India and people who came to rule India like Britishers. She is saying, is there aught, anything that you wanted and my hand did not give you? So she is saying, ke kuch bhi aisa tha, ye logo ko darkar tha aur mother India ne diya nahi. Next line. Rich gift of rhyming, gold or grain. She is saying when Indians needed or people from abroad needed gold, I gave them gold. I gave them rhyme and clothes because India at that time used to export a lot of clothes and of course grain, still India exports lots of grain to lots of countries still because many countries uh, do not have enough grain of their own. Uh, so Mother India is saying that when people needed grain, I gave them grain. When people needed gold, I gave them gold. When people needed rhyme and means clothes, I gave them clothes. So all the basic needs of life Mother India used to provide to people. Then she is saying, Lo, I have flung to east and west, priceless treasures torn from my breast. So third line, she is saying, see, I have flung, means I have given away uh, to eastern side of the world, to the western side of the world, priceless treasures. Here, priceless treasure refers to, priceless means which is uh, value, which is beyond value. And treasure here refers to uh, people who sacrifice their life for the sake of the country, the martyrs, the soldiers, the Bhagat Singhs. So she's saying that I have given my soldiers, my own kids, to people living in the East and people living in the West. Here we have to understand a bit of history that this poem was written when World War was going on. And Britishers had promised that if Indian soldiers participate in World War, then they will give us freedom. So Indian soldiers, they fought some war in the West. They fought some war in the Middle East. So she is saying that I have given my kids, soldiers, to fight in the Eastern part of the world. And I have given my soldiers to fight in the Western part of the world. So whom she has given? She has given the priceless treasures because they were not commodities. They were life. They were human beings. So, and they were very, very special people to Mother India, the freedom fighters, those uh, people who could sacrifice their life for the country. So she's saying, I have given those special people, priceless treasures, torn from my breast. So she is a mother and her kids uh, were very small because uh, it was just a nation which was about to be developed. So the kids are compared to soldiers and mother india is compared to a woman as a mother is very unwilling to sacrifice her kids or children or newborn babies so mother india was also not willing to sacrifice her soldiers for the sake of witnesses but she did sacrifice her priceless people those bhagat singh those mangal pandes uh, and they were all torn from the breast. Here, the torn from the breast image shows that it was very, very painful for a mother to give her son or to give her kids for the sake of freedom. And yielded the sons. So she says, I always yielded. I always gave my sons. I always surrendered my son from the stricken womb. It is called stricken womb. Womb means coke. The place from where the fortress developed. The place where foetus develops, so, it is called womb. So this womb is stricken because Britishers came and struck India. Before that, these Mongols came and struck India. Before that, there was a French colony. So these mother India wombs have often been struck by foreigners, by people uh, who came to exploit India. So she's saying this womb was already struck. Mother India was already wounded, attacked by people from all corners of the world by various reasons. So seeing in spite of my womb being struck, I gave up my sons. 
and whenever there was a drum in those days whenever there was war so drum was played so that soldiers can come and fight and they were given saber saber means sword so with that sword of doom means destruction they either could kill or they will get killed so whenever there was a drum beat to call soldiers to fight mother india always sacrificed her kids to the sabers of doom means jab bhi talwar ko darkar pada kisi sar ka so mother india always gave her kids in front of the sword of destruction so mother india is saying ki i have yielded up i have given up i have sacrificed my sons and from in which condition when india was in a very very pathetic condition when india was struggling then mother india is saying jab jab drum ka duty baja hai whenever there is a call of duty while playing the drum my kids are gone whenever the soldiers needed some head to fight some uh, some arms to move ahead my soldiers were there my kids were there so first stanza mother india is saying ki kuch bhi aisa nahi hai jo maine logo ko diya nahi she is saying maine gold diya hai maine grain diya i given clothes she is saying i have given my own kids to eastern part of the world to fight the western parts of europe to fight she is saying these kids were my priceless treasures but i have given them and i have given them from the core of my heart it was very painful to struck them from my breast but i still given them she is saying i have always surrendered my kids even when it was very difficult even when my womb was struck even then i have given up my soul whenever there was a call of duty mother india has always sacrificed her kids and she is saying that whenever there was a sword of doom destruction my kids never turned their back they always got the wound on the face they were not cowards they were martyrs so mother india is passionate about the sacrifice her kids have done for the development of the nation and the mankind as whole then she is saying then she is talking about the soldiers mother india is talking about the soldiers uh, second stanza first line gathered like pearls in the alien grave silent the sleep by the persian waves so here we have to understand that the, the, during the time we are referring to the war was going and soldiers of india indian soldiers were fighting for britishers with many other countries allied axis uh, and i'm talking about world wars so indian soldiers indian soldiers were employed by britishers to fight against their enemy so this is the historical background that indian soldiers were fighting on behalf of english english soldiers so that when the world war is over india gets freedom so this was what they had promised indians so here she is saying gathered like pearls in the alien grave so these soldiers who went to fight say in africa say in europe in france in flanders so they all died and like pearl moti ke tarah wo dusre kisi country ke grave mein pade hain now this is so unfortunate for a freedom fighter for a martyrs that the soldiers for which they are fighting they are not even able to get the grave in that very country ye soldiers british ke mohabbat mein ladne nahi gaye the they went because they loved the soil of this very country india and the graves are in foreign country jahan unko koi pehchanta nahi hai unke funeral ceremony ke liye unke mummy papa nahi aaye hain where they are being burned and they, they are not being burned by the family members so these people these soldiers this country men who fought they are in alien grave in grave of some other country so mother india is saying ki wo moti ke tarah kisi qabar mein pade hue hain kisi dusre country ke qabar mein silently they lie by the persian waves dead bodies were floating beside the persian euphrates river so she is saying ki alag alag country ke river ke bagal mein mere soldiers ke dead body motiyon ke tarah pade hote the scattered like cells on egyptian sand egypt mein bhi fight hua tha so like uh, sunk sunk jisse sunk bachta hai wo samundar ke kinare pade hote hain waise hi soldiers ke dead body uh, egyptian sand mein pade the kuch persians graves mein the kuch foreign countries ke grave mein the so these soldiers did not even get the dignity of having a proper burial then they are lying dead and their brows have become pale 
pale hair means they do not have that uh, lust, uh, they do not have that glow on the face as a living human being have. So, ab wo grave ke upar kabhi koi Persia mein mara hai, kabhi koi Egypt ke sand mein dead body kisi ka hai, and their dead body is lying. And their bro is pale, and somebody's hand is broken, somebody uh, is totally unable to walk. So, they are compared to, they are like, uh, they are like strong, like blue mon done by chance. So strong means that they are So their body is like a tree, like a lawn mower, like a flower, like a tree, like a tree, like Suppose there's a flower garden and you bring a lawn mower. Lawn mower is a uh, machine with which you can cut grass. So here this lawn mower is not cutting grass. It is cutting the bluesome flower khile khile phool ko khach 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 karke kaat de raha hai so and the flowers are strewn all over similarly soldiers of mother india have gone to different countries and their dead bodies are spread all over somewhere they are in egyptian sand somewhere they are in persian waves somewhere they are in foreign graves with broken hand broken legs with all dilapidated body with all body totally decamped and they are all lying down they are compared to flowers who are cut down by more. Lawn more is a machine which cuts the grass. Here, the instead of cutting the grass, it is cutting the soldier's dead body. How is it cut? It is cut by chance. When the destiny kuch aisa tha, Indian soldiers ko jana pada, ladna pada. They had to fight, and because they had to fight, they are all their dead bodies are strewn. When they are on four sides. Destiny ne unko kaat, chaat ke taro tarap bikhar diya hai. Kaan kaan? On the blood brown meadows of Flans and Flanders. These are the specific places where Indian soldiers were really killed. These are not poetry. This is history in the form of poetry. Soldiers did die in Persian waves. Soldiers did have their dead body in an alien grave. So this is all backed up by history. It is not just figments of imagination. This happened in reality and Sarojini Naidu herself was the first Indian president, woman president of Indian National Congress and she was the first governor of uh, Free India. Uh, Uttar Pradesh governor, she was in a very very special post of uh, various things after independence and even before independence and she herself was a freedom fighter and uh, so these all poetic lines are backed up by history. So soldiers were lying down on the brown place because there the soil is brown. But the soil, brown soil has become red because of the blood of Indian soldiers. So they are lying in the grassland of France and Flanders. These are the name of places where the war happened. So unke dead body were brown soil pe gire hue hai, bikre hue hai. Or, the grassland is so it's called brown because the soil is brown and bloody so khun tha to wo brown soil bhi red ho gaya wo grassland mein unka dead body bikhra hua hai so if the question comes in exam that how this poem is anti war if you write the second stanza because this war is making indian soldiers die in foreign country without dignity this war is making indian soldiers do not get the due respect that a soldier is supposed to get, that a martyr is supposed to get. This war is making them lie pale and brown with broken hand and broken legs. They are like flowers cut down by the destiny of lawnmower. So the second stanza is about destruction of war. Third stanza. Can you measure the grief of tears I weep? So Mother India is asking, asking Indian people, asking foreigners, asking readers, asking you. Can you measure the grief of tears I weep? So Mother India is saying, can you feel the tears that I, I shed because my kids have been killed for so many years. Oh, the Mughals came and killed so many people. Okay, British India came and ruled on us for more than 200 years. And then uh, Jallianwala Bagh massacre happened and then Role Act Act and Vanakular Act. And in every act, few people died and we did not even know exactly know how many people died. So Mother India is saying, Ke kya koi mere dukh ko Can you measure the grief of tears I weep? So Mother India is saying, Ke, uh, the tears that I shed, can anybody understand my tears? Or compass the woe of watch I keep. So Mother India is saying that I keep watching, like compass keeps on watching, 
कि किधर से कौन सा डायरेक्शन हो रहा है सो मदर इंडिया कीप्स वॉचिंग कि किस साइड से सोल्जर्स लोग आ रहे सो सी हैज बीन वॉचिंग ऑल थ्रू सेंचुरीज एंड दिस सोल्जर्स हैव कम फ्रॉम डिफरेंट कंट्रीज एंड हैव किल्ड इंडियन पीपल और इंडियन सोल्जर्स सो मदर इंडिया से like a compass keeps watching the direction mother india has been watching all the enemies and she is saying that i have been continuously watching my kids die from various directions some britishers came from west some middle east people came from the eastern side some people came from the western side so india is looted and destroyed from all directions so she is saying that i have been shedding tears for so many centuries can anybody ever understand then mother india is saying that i I have been watching my kids being killed from all directions, like a compass of wo. Wo means sorrow. So, duh ka sorrow charo taraf se aa raha tha. Mother India is saying that the the compass of sorrow which I keep, I keep watching like a compass in all directions, and sorrow and destruction is coming from all sides. So, Mother India is asking, can anybody understand my tears? can anybody understand how i have to keep watching from which side the enemies come and kill my kids and then mother india is saying something very very different or the pride that thrills through my heart's despair she is saying i feel a pride and it fills me with excitement though my heart is filled with despair so it's a kind of paradoxical because she is filled with despair because her kids are dying from bhagat singh to sukhdev and from mangal pande to all those un, unnamed and recognized soldiers who died who would never know even in history books so mother india is saying that it fills me with despair ek maa ko dukh hoga jab uske bachche mar jayenge my would mother would feel the same if i die as a young child would be bringing up food to her the table so any mother would feel so mother india is saying that my heart is filled with despair but in this despair there is pride there is a sense of achievement though and it feels this pride feels her with excitement that my kids are dying but they are not turning their back they are not shrinking the responsibility they are they are not coward they are doing their duty without even battling an eyelid so mother india is filled with excitement and excitement that the kids are worthy of making her country a great country so mother india is saying that this despair of tears this despair because i have to keep watching to all the corners of the world enemies are coming but still this fills me with pride kis cheez ka pride ki mere bacche kabhi bhi darte nahi mere bacche kabhi piche nahi hatte they they france or flanders or germany ho europe ho they go on and fight for the sake of the country then she is saying and hope she still has hope hope is the brightest jewel somebody said and it was right and hope that comforts the anguish of prayer so she is in anguish she is in pain she is in anxiety that her kids are dying for centuries and she has been ruled over for british so 200 years remember this poem was written when britishers were still ruling on in india so it's a pre independence poem it's a, a time when britishers were very cruel they were doing jallian wala bag massacre and killing people as long as there is bullet in the <coughs> gun so this poem is saying that i am in anguish i'm praying i'm praying i'm praying for the freedom of this mother country this mother india the so mother india is saying i'm praying for my kids i'm praying that this britishers go away and we we indians become free so she is saying and it's a prayer of anguish parishani mein prayer ho raha but she is saying i have still the hope ummeed hai but is baat mein comfort and satisfaction hai kya kis baat ka ummeed kis baat ka satisfaction next line says the far sad glorious vision i see so mother india is saying that though my kids are killed though i am shedding tears though i am keeping watch of the enemies coming from all the direction though my heart is filled with despair but i still feel the pride in my heart i still feel that excitement though i am praying out of tension though i am praying out of anguish anxiety frustration but still there is hope hope of what the far sad glorious vision i see so she is saying i can see in far away in times to come it's a sad vision but it's a glorious vision sad because it has to come at the cost of millions of people dying for the sake of making india free and it is glorious because it will make indians free so she is saying 
कि दो देर इज सो मच ऑफ प्रॉब्लम एंजाइटी टेंशन टीयर्स डिस्परेशन पेन सोरो बट आई कैन स्टिल सी द होप वन डे वन डे India will be glorious, and it is sad because it will come at the cost of millions of life, at the cost of women becoming widow, at the cost of mother losing their kids. But see, still feels that India will be glorious one day, and she so can see that the banner, then the flag of India, will be filled with. It will be torn because so many people have come and tried to torn it, but still the banner will be red. the banner will be filled with blood because it will be a victory of uh, it will be a banner of success so mother india could visualize ki hamara bhi jhanda hoga aur usme khoon mein lithre pitre honge it will be smeared with blood yes the banner will be torn because it has been attacked by many countries but once mother india dreams that in very far away though it's a sad vision though uh, it will bring glory in mother india but that country will be free so in this last four lines mother india is saying though i am weeping for centuries though i have been watching uh, people die in so many uh, angles of india somewhere in this part of india some people dying in south india some people dying in north india like compass keeps on watching then she is saying ke do i am praying for freedom of my countrymen my heart is filled with despair but still there is pride still there is excitement still there is satisfaction kis baat ka satisfaction ki ummeed hai though the prayer is of pain ek ummeed hai ki indians will be free ek ummeed hai ki one day the banner of india will be there of course it will be torn but in the initial stage of course it will be filled with blood but in india will get freedom and then mother india in the last stanza is saying one day the banner will be there the fill with blood one day the banner will be there though it will be torn by britishers for so many centuries it has been torn but one day mother india is saying this when india was still ruled by britishers we saying one day the terror and tumult of hate will cease so she visualizes she dreams she envisions a day ek din aisa aayega ki jab terror khatam ho jayegi terror from britishers terror from foreigners ye sab khatam ho jayenge and the tumult of hate will cease tumult means confusion bechaini beitminani so wo confusion of hate will cease that hindu muslim hate britishers hating all indians indians hating uh, So, ये सब नफरत खत्म हो जाएंगे एंड लाइफ विल रीफैशन मतलब एक बार से जिंदगी शुरू होगा एंड दैट स्टार्टिंग विल बी ऑन द पिलर्स ऑफ पीस एंड विल मींस अ काइंड ऑफ पिलर इस पे रख के कोई काम होता है सो अगेन द लाइफ विल रीस्टार्ट एंड द स्टार्टिंग पॉइंट ऑफ दैट लाइफ विल बी पीस एंड योर लव सेल ऑफर मेमोरेबल थैंक्स टू द कॉम्रेड हु फाइट टू मेक दिस कंट्री फ्री देन सी सेइंग दैट रीडर्स यू आवर सी सेइंग के इंडियंस लोग एक दिन उनको मेमोरेबल थैंक्स देंगे उनको याद करेंगे उनको उ, उ, उनके सेक्रीफाइस को रिमेम्बर करेंगे शहीदों के मजार पे मजार मीन प्लेस वेल द डाई हर साल मेले लगेंगे और वतन पे मरने वालों का बाकी निशा होगा द पीपल हु डाई फॉर द सेक ऑफ कंट्री दे डोंट डाई दे बिकम इमोटल सो मदर इंडिया इन द थर्ड लाइन इज सही कि योर मीन्स रीडर्स फ्री इंडियंस और इंडियंस your love will pay a memorable thanks a thanks out of memory out of gratitude that you made india free so mother india is saying ke ek din hoga jab terror khatam hoga confusions nahi honge aur zindagi fir se shuru hoga british ke se jaane ke baad india will be free once more and then mother india is saying the indians will pray thank will remember all the freedom fighters the great people uh, and when i say great i'm not just talking about soldiers i'm also talking about historians i'm also talking about writers i'm also talking about soldiers i'm also talking about uh, those normal peace and i'm also talking about even saints who, who participated in freedom struggle so uh, they all will pay memorable thanks to all this rank of people they were in dauntless rank so these freedom fighters they fought comrade means fighters so indian will remember indians log yaad karenge un soldiers log ko un bahadur logon ko 
But when I say Bahadur, I'm not talking about just soldiers. I'm talking about those housewife who gave their jewelry for the sake of freedom. They are also paid. I am also talking about kids who gave away education for the sake of freedom. I'm also talking about those uh, sipai mutiny. I'm also talking about those mothers who said to the kids, "Go and don't come back until you make kid, kid country free." So yes, comrade, logo ke sacrifice ko log yad rakhenge. वो लोग जो लड़े हैं हु फॉट इन डॉन्टलेस रैंक मीन्स दे फॉट इन रैंक वेर एवर दे प्लेस दे फॉट फियरलेस मीन्स द रैंकिंग वॉज फियरलेस मतलब वो नीडर हो के जहां भी उनको रैंक में रखा गया वो लड़े एंड योर एंड यू ऑनर द डीड ऑफ दिस डेटलेस वंस मतलब इन लोगों को आप याद करें उनको उनको अपने दिल में समा के रखें उनके लिए आंखें कभी नम हो जाए और उनके लिए कभी Quiet moments may yad aaye. So this mother India is saying you honor them, you you pay respect to these people. Mother India is praying that one day India will be free, and free Indians, Lord, they will honor. Honor whom? The people who are deathless means who are not dead because people who die for the country they live forever, so they are called deathless. They are called immortal. They are called martyrs. They are called sahib. So Mother India is saying that Indians, Lord. उनके डीड्स को याद रखेंगे किनके डीड्स को वो सोल्जर्स लोग जो डेथ लेस थे उनको उनको डेथ तो भगत सिंह को कैसे डेथ आएगा सुखदेव को कैसे डेथ आएगा मंगल पांडे को कैसे कोई मार सकता है सो यस इज सेइंग दैट यू ऑनर मदर इंडिया सेइंग टू पीपल ऑफ इंडिया दैट यू रिमेंबर यू रेस्पेक्ट फील फॉर देम यू 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 चेरिश देयर मेमोरीज यू रिकॉल देयर मेमोरीज so this is the honor this is the honor that you pay for the deathless one and remember remember that we got freedom because of people like this and remember the blood of my martyrs and so mother india is saying to all indians can remember it is my martyred son matlab shaheed log jo country ke liye shaheed hue hain unhi ke liye ye country free hai so now let me uh, just end this video with the title gift of india so what is this gift of india we remember the sacrifices of our freedom fighter is a gift that we can pay to this freedom fighters and the freedom fighters are given at their life the sacrifice the job the family everything so that is the gift that they have given to india and it is the gift that we should give to india what recognize their sacrifices remember cherish and be thankful be grateful for this people so here in the last stanza mother india is saying ki one day india will be free one day there will be no terror one day there will be no confusion one day life will again restart on the pillars of peace one day we indians will pay thanks to all those freedom fighters celebrating independence day in the schools and colleges and universities and everywhere even in the house so mother india is saying ki ek bar indians log fir se Uh, वो सोल्जर्स जो वतन के लिए अपने सब कुछ कुर्बान करके चले गए उनके उनको थैंक यू बोलेंगे विद मेमोरीज चेरिशिंग देयर आइडियल्स टू कॉमरेड्स हु फॉट इन द डॉन्टलेस रैंक सो फ्रीडम फाइटर्स हु फॉट ब्रेवलेसली इन विच एवर रैंक दर प्लेस वी विल रिमेंबर देम एंड वी विल ऑनर देम विल रेस्पेक्ट देम वी विल विल चेरिश द मेमोरीज किन का और सोल्जर्स हुए डेथलेस एंड रिमेंबर the blood of my martyr son so at last mother india is saying ki you indians you remember that my kids sacrifice their life so this will be the gift of india so gift of india has two interpretation one india ko soldiers logo ne apna life hi gift de diya bhagat singh ne to apna zindagi de diya sukhdev ne diya and according to me even the people who were not soldiers they gave their life for the country so they have given the gift of india what is the gift their own life so what should we do in return we should remember their sacrifice their deeds their acts their bravery their struggle so this is our remembering them is a gift that we pay to them so one gift is that they have given the life and our gift is to remember their sacrifice so gift of india has two meaning so this is uh, the video of gift of india and uh, if this video has been of any value i request you that you share it with people who might uh, get benefit out of it uh, 
and comment on the comment section if you have any question thank you for watching the video